So, as I said, at this point, you might well conclude that what I'm saying is, what I'm describing is an impossible necessity. That the image of a country is its most valuable asset, that it's tremendously important, that it is possibly the most significant determinant of its ability to trade profitably and effectively and happily in the global community. And yet at the same time, I'm saying that that image is a thing over which it has virtually no direct control or even indirect influence. Is there hope? Well, yes, there is hope. It is actually possible through a number of means to do something about it. And very briefly, what I've discovered over the past 15 years or so is that the countries that do certain things seem to achieve a certain amount of traction in taking control of their reputation and beginning to leverage it for their own benefit. First of all, the most simple and straightforward and banal sort of thing is something that curiously very few countries do, and that's simply coordinate. Coordinate between government, business, and civil society, and coordinate between the sectors who in their different ways have a stake in the country's image and have a voice portraying the country internationally. One of the many wonderful things about Gateway Island is the fact that it provides a mechanism for making those connections, for getting those sectors, public, private, civil society, to talk together. I think that you need three things if, you're, if a country is going to do this extraordinary and rare and important piece of competitive advantage in the modern age. It needs to have a strategy, it needs to do lots of substance, and it needs to occasionally produce symbolic actions. Strategy is the hard but the interesting part. That's when everybody puts their heads together and says, they ask a simple question. The simple question is, what is Ireland for? What's it for? One of the things I love about the age in which we live is that all countries now need to answer that question. They need to know what they're for. Imagine if God's hand accidentally slipped on the celestial keyboard tomorrow and deleted Ireland, how many people would care and for what reason? What is Ireland's purpose and function in the world? We live in an age where that question has a very important meaning. And therefore, how are we perceived today and what are we today? And what could we be tomorrow? And by tomorrow, I could mean 50 or 100 years in the future. And therefore, how would we be perceived? How would we need to be perceived in order to do that? This strategy can't be invented by creative types who you lock in a room with beer and drugs. This has to be dug up from the ground. It's already there. It's the story of the people. It's the genius of the Irish. It just needs to be crystallized in a useful and portable form so you can say, that's our backstory, and get everybody to align around that backstory. In the end, this is the picture of Ireland that we're trying to talk about, whether we're selling tourism or investment or products or whatever, even people. That's the strategy. Substance is then making it true, kind of obvious. But if, let's just say, for the sake of ludicrous argument, that Ireland wanted to position itself as being the soft power paragon of the modern age, the cultural conscience of Europe, well, then you've got to be it. And over the 20 or 30 or 50 or 100 years, you've got to make that true. It's kind of obvious, but you have to say it, because when the word branding is floating around, people sometimes forget that there has to be a product inside the wrapper. Those two things on their own will not do anything for Ireland's image. They'll do a great deal for Ireland. If you have a strategy and it's shared by a useful majority of people and you're delivering the substance, it will make the country better. It will generate wealth and self-respect, but it won't generate profile and standing internationally. To do that, you need the third element, which is what I call symbolic actions. Symbolic actions are pieces of substance which have an intrinsic communicative power. There's something about them which proves the point about the country. One of the examples I most like to use when I'm explaining this actually comes from Ireland. And the Irish always laugh when I give this example because like so many of these things, it looks quite different from the inside and the outside, like the swan gliding down the river whose feet are going like this under the water. But the example I love to give was the, uh, was the uh, reduction of personal income tax to zero, I think it was, for people who could prove they were artists, authors, playwrights, musicians, and so forth. Now, this is a wonderful symbolic action because it proves beyond a shadow of doubt that this is a country that cares about culture. The Irish government could have spent millions of euros a year running campaigns saying we care about culture and nobody would have paid the slightest bit of attention. But a piece of real fiscal policy, which cost the government money, maybe not so much because those guys don't really earn anything, but all the same, 
it was a real piece of fiscal policy. And it, A, proved beyond a shadow of doubt that this was a country that cared sufficiently about culture to enshrine it in its policy framework. And B, it was a story that was so extraordinary and so newsworthy that without the aid of a PR agency, it went around the world twice in 24 hours. So those things may seem trivial, and they may seem unimportant, but by God, they're important. The problem with governments, you see, is that they deal every day with incredibly serious matters, and they make a big mistake. They think that because things are serious, they have to be boring, and they mustn't. We're in a game now where boring is the most dangerous thing you can be, because it will get you precisely nowhere. So bringing the art of creativity and imagination and inspiration to the policy-making process is the single most valuable thing that one can do. Because without that, you don't get the leverage that a small country like Ireland needs to punch above its weight. The ideas are what matter, the quality of the ideas and their relevance to the strategy. Let me finish off just by saying one thing. The reason why I feel optimistic about the world at the moment is partly because I'm a bloody fool but it's also partly because I see something happening which I think is really, really, really important. You know about corporate social responsibility. Corporate social responsibility was, and still is in some circles, a real buzzword. The idea that suddenly, 20 years ago, companies started to recognize that they had responsibilities towards society and to the planet. And if they wanted to retain the loyalty of their customers, they had to do good as well as do well. I think that if we look, we can begin to see quite clearly the beginnings of a contagion of CSR to countries. Let's call it GSR, governmental social responsibility. People are starting to behave towards other countries using the same criteria that they use towards companies. The same adolescents who will refuse to buy Reebok trainers because they think they're made by children in Malaysia will also not go on holiday to Slovakia because they don't like the Slovakian government's stance on climate change. Why wouldn't it be the same? Because it's the same audience applying the same moral and ethical values and codes of today to all of their decision-making processes. And the great news is, I spend my life going around talking to governments, and I see them paying attention to this. I see them beginning to realize that they must have something that makes them admired and respected and noticed by people outside their own borders. I see them noticing that their progress and prosperity depends to a great degree on their reputation, and their reputation depend, depends to a great deal, to a great extent, on their performance in the community of nations. The combination of those two realizations is dramatic. What has Ireland done for the world today? What is it about the genius of the Irish what is Ireland for in the community of nations? How are you going to do that? How are you going to leverage the population to prove it, to live it, and to be formal and informal ambassadors around the world to get that message across? How are you going to prove it every day with dramatic symbolic actions that get it into the media? And how is all of this going to be wired together so that Ireland becomes perhaps the first nation in the 21st century to really configure itself for the real world in which nations compete today. Thank you for your enduring patience. <laughs>